Hello and welcome to Broadside War Gaming. My name is Oliver and I'm joined by Kira and today we're going to talk about things we wish we knew before we started the hobby. Some of our top tips, things we wish we knew, straight from in here to over there. Yeah? Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think we have some good insights. You've been in the hobby now for four or five decades. I'm on maybe my third year, so we might have some different things to offer, I think. Four decades. That's true and slightly depressing. Um, yeah, stay tuned and we'll give you some tips and hopefully you can learn something along the way. Warhammer is an incredibly diverse hobby with so many facets and today we're here to help you navigate through it all. Whether you're a complete newbie or a seasoned veteran, we've got something for you. All right, we're going to start off strong with my first top tip, which is in regards to buying your very first army in anything to do with the hobby. Um, I see people get really excited all the time and they want to buy their whole army at, in one go or at least half their army in one go. And I would recommend not doing that. I would start smaller um, because I know with me, I had the Grey Knights and I had Eidneth Deepkin, got really excited, collected a whole army um, before realizing they, they weren't actually the armies that I, that I really wanted to stick with. Sometimes it's because the painting doesn't suit your own style. Sometimes it's because the play style doesn't suit your own style. Um, so start off small, let your collection grow, and don't be like the rest of us and have a big old pile of shame. When it comes to Warhammer, you don't actually need to know any of the lore to start playing. You can just buy a start collecting box, paint some miniatures and play the game. But the lore is a really cool, deep and interesting part of the Games Workshop world. So if it's something you wanted to get into, where would you start? That is a question I get asked a lot in the shop, is I'm looking to start getting into the lore, what are the books I should read? Now, unfortunately, there are no start here books, but if I had to give my advice, I would say there are a few decent places to actually start. One is the rule books, whether you're reading Age of Sigma or Warhammer 40,000, both of them will give you a nice light spread of a lot of topics and factions and chapters and history without going into too much detail in one thing. Then you can kind of pick and choose from there what you like. If I had to say start somewhere with some of the novels, I would say pick up the Horus Heresy books. The first three of those are a wonderful primer for your Warhammer 40,000 knowledge. This in fact starts 10,000 years before Warhammer 40,000 and it goes into some detail about the Primarchs, the Emperor and the beginnings of the galaxy as you know it. Um, Age of Sigmar is a little different because it doesn't have the same rich history that Warhammer 40,000 has. That said, I've recently read the Dominion book and the Age of Sigmar core book, and this a wonderful light start into the Warhammer Age of Sigmar world. It touches on a few factions and a few different planes of existence that they live in. So if I had to say start somewhere, it would be those. But if the lore doesn't interest you at all, you don't need to know any of it. Okay, you're coming to the point that I really want to make, but I'm afraid to say because don't switch off because everyone says this, but it's true. You need to try new things and don't be scared. Don't, don't, don't be scared. <laughs> try new things all the time. If you ever watch any of my streams, I do try new things often and like 50% of the time they don't even work out, but it's how you find new techniques that suit you and how you find your style is by trying new things, new, new gadgets, uh, new paints, new techniques, everything like that. You just you just need to see what's out there, see what YouTube tutorials are out there that you can follow and just keep practicing. There are plenty of things like rust effects, still water, all that kind of stuff that are just crying out to be used and you just can't be scared. I know far too many people that have been in the hobby for years and have never tried dry brushing, they've never tried uh, the water slide decals, any of that stuff because they're too afraid. Don't be scared, just do it. When it comes to painting, let spray cans do some work. Spray cans are your friends. Whether you're just applying a base coat to paint over, like a white or a black or a gray, they're also really, really good for applying zenithals. And by that, I mean a darker base coat, like a black or a gray, and a white from a sort of 45 degree angle. This will help your contrast paints look more contrasty, and it will also help you see where the shadows on the miniatures would naturally lie. Not only that, they're a great tool for efficiently, effectively, time-savingly, and they will also give you a really smooth, even base coat if you're using the colored ones like the red or the blue. Too often, I see painters spraying something black and then spending hours giving two even coats of whatever their base color is, blue or red. And if you're painting 50 Marines, that can take a long time and it's very difficult to achieve a smooth, even finish to let your whole army match together. So why not let the spray can do the work for you? Speaking of looking your best, let's take a minute to talk about this video sponsor, Manscaped. 
they sent me the Handyman, a compact shaver, so let's check it out. The Handyman is equipped with a unique dual blade. It features a standard foil shaver as well as a long hair leveler blade to knock down up to three days worth of growth. Safety first, the Handyman features skin safe technology to help you avoid those pesky nicks and cuts no matter where you're shaving. Maneuvering it is a breeze, even in those tricky to reach spots, if you know what I mean. And it's waterproof, so do feel free to give it a splash or two, but still be careful. Ready to join the Manscaped revolution? Head to the description and use my special link to get an incredible 20% off plus free shipping at Manscaped with the promo code BWG at manscaped.com forward slash broadsword wargame. And they even sent me some boxes as well, which are absolutely great for your balls. Pokeballs, I mean, there's room for everything. Um, but honestly, they are really comfortable and they keep all the right things in the right places. So don't forget to check the description or pinned comment below to get that awesome 20% off plus the free shipping at Manscaped with promo code BWG at manscaped.com forward slash broadsword wargaming. Okay, you ready? <laughs> okay, we're on take two because I got overexcited about the wet palette in take one. <laughs> but I just think they're really good. I was lucky enough to start painting with a wet palette, so I didn't know any different for a long time. Um, when I tried to paint without one, I was shocked, frankly, that people live like that. <laughs> you need a wet palette. Uh, you can make these yourself. There are YouTube tutorials out there that will show you how to make them. Um, they're, they're not as good, they just aren't, but you can do that. Um, and there are different ones for different price ranges too. You can get smaller ones. This is, which one is this? I don't even know. Wet palette version two from Redgrass. It's like a bigger one. Uh, it's really, really good. This is the one I use, but I've had smaller ones from Army Painter and stuff before and they're just as good. Um, I live in Ireland where it's like damp and cold and I still benefit from this. So especially if you're somewhere where the weather is hot and your paint is drying all the time, like why are you not using one of these? Get one. Your life will be changed. Get a wet palette. Please, please, please don't get disheartened if your miniatures don't look as good as you'd hoped they would. It's so easy nowadays to look on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or the Games Workshop website itself, paint a miniature, look at one of those on there and think mine is never going to look as good as that. I promise you, most of us in the world feel exactly the same. Probably everybody does. I myself have been painting for 30 years and still feel like I'm miles away from where I should be or where I'd like to be. But painting requires so much time, skill, experience, practice, thousands of hours to get really good at, and you will improve if you stick with it. It's something that just requires practice. Keep that first model, see your progress, try new techniques, try new things, and you will end up to a standard where you feel like you've improved. You'll probably improve in steps, plateau, steps, plateau, if you stick with it, but don't get disheartened. Just enjoy it, enjoy the hobby, and enjoy the way you like painting, and find something that works for you. Next up is something that I think is really, really important to nail down at the beginning. People usually figure this out on their own, um, but actively figuring this out early will definitely help you. Take a look uh, and think about what kind of Warhammer play player, <laughs> what kind of player you want to be uh, or you are. Are you very competitive? Are you just in it for the social and the fun aspect? Uh, maybe you're just a painter and collector, that would be more my style, or maybe you're just totally into the lore. All of those are totally valid, different play styles, different collection styles, different ways to be involved in the Warhammer or tabletop gaming community. Um, but I would say if you're looking for advice from people, knowing what kind of player you are is really, really gonna help you accept their advice and take it on board. Um, for example, if you've been told to just pick an army that looks really cool, uh, and then you find out that they're not that well performing in tournaments, you're not going to be ultimately happy with that and vice versa. You don't want to get told to pick this army because it's really, really strong and then realize you don't connect with it because they don't look as cool as you want, their lore is not kind of the way you want. Figuring that out early is really going to help you enjoy your Warhammer or tabletop gaming experience to the max. If I could offer another piece of advice, it would be to make sure you've got good lighting when it comes to painting or photographing your miniatures. Budget dependent, you can use pretty much anything to light miniatures. I myself here in the studio have big overhead lights and a big box light, but most people don't need to light a room like this. You just need to light your painting area. You can use simple desk lamps. You can use a reading light, spotlights, a lamp that'll attach to your table and adjust up and down, or even something like one of these halo lights. You can make these for cheap using plastic, wood, and LED strips. The advantage to this is you paint here and it's lit all around nice, bright, and clear. 
When it does come to the bulbs or the colour though, make sure you're using daylight bulbs if you can, rather than the sort of muddier orange bulbs you might be more used to. If you've not looked at them before, they'll be more blue in colour and more white, so a bit clearer. And the advantage to that is it will show your miniature in the true colour it's painted in. So if you're painting, you can make sure the model looks how it looks in real life under different lights rather than in your muddier, darker or possibly orangier home lights. And when you're photographing them, it will show the true colour too. So invest in good lighting no matter what the budget, even if it's just daylight bulbs in desk lamps, it'll do absolutely fine and it will help improve the end result. So there you have it, your super quick intro to starting your Warhammer journey. Dive in, paint your armies and conquer the tabletop. There you go, that is some of our top tips, some of the stuff we wish we knew before we had gotten into the hobby. Um, hopefully some of these things come in handy for you. Um, let us know in the comments as well if there's anything else that you wish you had known that we didn't mention here. What was, what was your top, top tip of all the list? Number one tip. I think superseding anything even on the list is just enjoy it. You can't go off list. Enjoy the hobby. You went off list. Fair enough. Enjoy the hobby. Top tip. Top tip number one. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>